If you hadn't made the connection uh, yet, uh, Sister Mary Elizabeth, who was in the video, is my sister. So. <laughs> this time it's my pleasure to present uh, Sister Miriam James for, our, uh, for her talk. Thank you. Well, good evening. I just want to say officially, um, just on behalf of the Society of Our Lady of the Most Holy Trinity, how grateful we are. Uh, we're grateful to, to have our founders honored and just to be in the presence of, of just this wonderful community. And I, I did not graduate from Benedictine. I wish I did, but I didn't. And, um, but it's just such a wonderful, I think all of us, you know, we can agree that the Catholic world is a very small world. And we share hearts in so many different ways and we share relationships in so many different ways. So it feels like even being here with you this evening that we're part of your family. And so as I was praying for you this morning, because we get up early and pray because that's what nuns do. And so just praying for you and, and just my first time to this dinner and just noticing that you're not just a, a group of people at a dinner, but that you're individual people and you're people with hopes and dreams and desires and, and goals in your life. And, and whether you come to this dinner because you come every year and you can't wait for it to happen, or maybe you're a longtime benefactor of the Abbey, or maybe you were voluntold to come, like however you ended up here this evening. What I was, as I was pondering and I was just praying for you, I really believe all of us, myself included, we're really here this evening because we've found something beautiful. We're here because beauty has captivated us. And we see it in the monks. We see it in the Gilchrist. We see it in JD. We see it in Father Jim and Father John. And we see it in Christ, first and foremost. And we're here because every single one of us can look around at the world and, you know, like Jesus, when the people are coming to him and he's saying, there's something greater than Solomon here. There's something greater than the world here. There's something greater than just this small thing that I'm often caught up with. And every single one of us intuitively, you know, in our hearts that what we've experienced this evening and why we're here is because we've experienced deep beauty. And it's just really wonderful. Uh, St. John Paul II is known very well for his letter to artists, but most people don't know that Pope Benedict, who um, is a beautiful artist himself, wrote a letter as well. And I just, it's one of my favorite quotes from Pope Benedict, and he talks about beauty, and he says this, and I think as you hear it, you're going to hear it resonate in your own heart. He says, authentic beauty unlocks the yearning of the human heart, the profound desire to know and to love and to go towards the other and to reach for the beyond. He says, that if we acknowledge that beauty touches us intimately, that it wounds us, that it opens our eyes, then we rediscover the joy of seeing and of being able to grasp the profound meaning of our existence and the divine mystery of which we are a part. And I would offer that to you, my dear friends, that that's what we're here this evening to receive, and that's what's inspired us, and that's what makes our hearts sing with joy. When we see videos and we see the life of the monks, we see the beauty of this life given over to God, and that's really what it is. It's the captivating power and beauty of a life given over to Christ. And, and as much as society wants to redefine all kinds of things, there are certain things it will never be able to redefine. And one of them is a love for, a, a, a heart for a love that lasts a lifetime, a life of purpose and meaning a life that's something beyond. And isn't that what you see when you see the monks at Benedictine? Isn't that what you see in their hearts is you see something that speaks beyond you. And in a sense, it gives us comfort and it gives us joy and it gives us the reminder that God is true to his promises because it brings us hope. And hope as Catholics, hope is not wishful thinking. The theological virtue of hope over toward God himself is this, that God is faithful to his promises and that heaven is our home. That every single one of us here, no matter where we come from and what walk of life we come from, what's happening in our heart, every single one of us wants to go home. And every single one of us wants to be joined to a life of beauty, a, a consuming love that never ends. It, it's why if you've ever read the children's series, the Chronicles of Narnia, or if you've ever heard of them, and if you've never heard of them, I don't know where you've been your whole life, but here we go, okay? So it's actually a series of seven books. And at the very, at the very end of this series of seven books, C.S. Lewis, one of the most brilliant minds in literature, concludes with what I really believe is the best vision of heaven I've ever read. And I won't spoil the entire thing for you, but as he paints this vision of heaven, he says this. He says, it's like a book which no one on earth has read, which goes on forever, and in which every chapter is better than the one before. And that is why our hearts ache when we see beauty, true beauty, 
That's why our hearts ache when we see people giving themselves in service. That's why our hearts ache when we see people giving their lives to Christ. This is why our hearts ache when we meet Jesus. And this is something that every human desires. It is our heart. And one of the things we're particularly noticing tonight, one of the things we're particularly absorbing of is the beauty of consecrated life. That throughout generations, from Christ himself as he calls the disciples, and you know, we hear the readings this week as the disciples are struggling, they're just like us, and he's saying, you come, you put your, you put your doubts in my wounds, you come. You come and see, I'm faithful to my promises, you come and see. And from Christ himself, the, the disciples come, and you know, they're, they're scattered throughout the world, and religious communities form, and people, generation after generation after generation, have desired to follow Christ. And they follow him as poor, chaste, and obedient, And they give up everything in the world, not because it's bad, but because there's something greater there. There's something more there that God is alive and well, and no matter what is happening in any society, no matter what is happening in any generation, consecrated life stands firm saying, God is with us. He will never leave us. He will never forsake us. He is for us. God is for us. And this is what we see, even if we cannot articulate it, in the life of every single person, particularly given over to Christ in the consecrated life. That we see them and we say that God is alive and God is well and that he loves us and that he's calling us home. And you know, people, no matter what walk of life, can intuit this very deeply in their hearts as they, as they listen and they look at life and they face sufferings, that we all face sufferings. And we all have places in our hearts where we feel like hope has been lost. And perhaps even in your lives right now, you have certain places where Easter has come and the liturgical season is Easter. It's here, but maybe not in your heart. And the Lord comes to us in these places. It's just so often, if you go out out in public dressed like this in a habit in 2022, you have very interesting things happen to you. Can I just tell you that? Okay, so... And it's really wonderful, but I have all kinds of stories, just like as any of these wonderful people could tell you here that are wearing a hat, but they have all kinds of stories. But some time ago during the height of the pandemic, I was at O'Hare Airport and, you know, we're all um, wearing, you know, masks and we're all masked up. And I was wearing a gray mask next to a gray wall. So I don't even know what people could just see eyes. I don't know. It's just, it's probably a little creepy, but I was just standing there minding my own business as I usually am. And this um, young man came up to me and he was probably in his early twenties and he came up to me and I could tell he, something was troubling him. And he said to me, he said, are you are you religious? And I said, yes. I said, I'm I'm a Catholic nun. And then he took his mask off and he looked at me and he said, I'm not a believer, but he said, my mom was diagnosed with cancer today. And he said, do you think you could pray for her? And I said, would it be okay if we just prayed? Can I pray for her right now? Can I just pray for her right now? And he said, yeah. So I took his hands in the middle of O'Hare Airport (laughs) and we started praying for his mama who was very sick. And we prayed for her, we prayed for her healing, we prayed for him, we prayed for his family. And after I finished praying with him, I I, I was taking his hands and I looked up at him and he was just absolutely weeping. And I just said, can I hug you? (laughs) Can I just hug you? And I just gave him this big hug and he just walked away. And I don't know what happened to him, I don't know what happened to his mama, but I know that there was a man that day who was searching for God and who wasn't even a believer. But just seeing somebody who had a visible manifestation of a sign that God is alive and well, he could intuit that. And he could ask for somebody to come and intercede for his mom. And this is what you're doing as you're supporting the Abbey. Like, this is what you're doing when we give to communities. This is what we're doing when we're supporting young men and women to say yes to God, to say yes to a life that, that's incomparable to anything else. To say yes to a life that never goes out of style, a life that is timeless because it is a life of eternity. It is a life that even now anticipates what we will all know in heaven when God is our all in all and he is the complete fulfillment of every desire that we have and it lies in every hope and every ache and every dream and every sorrow and any joy and it is here in our hearts and this is why you're here tonight. And I guess if I could just say kind of one last thing, I, I just, I find literature interesting and it's, we talk about saints and we talk about kind of the, the sign of saints and, and what we've seen this evening is we've seen people, you know, receive the love of God and, and experience the love of God and to give that back. And it's like what you're doing this evening in your lives as you live your lives, as you say yes to Christ, as you let Jesus come and encounter you, as you let him take your hands and place it in his wounds. You know, Father Flanagan would often say that Jesus Christ rose from the dead with his wounds open so you and I could go into them and find healing. That he's coming for you and I, my dear friends. And how we live our lives matter. 
and what we give to matters and what we surround ourselves with, this matters. And, and every time we say yes and every time we say yes to the Lord and every time we allow the Lord to come and encounter us and we are present at events like this and we are faithful to our faith, every time we do that, new grace is born in the world through our yes, through the cooperation of the love of God. And the world is deeply desiring to see a sign of that because that's what they want. That's what everybody wants. They want to have an encounter with Christ and they want to know that their lives matter and that this world means something. And it does. And in his book on St. Thomas Aquinas, G.K. Chesterton, he, he wrote this and I, just, I particularly love this quote. He says, the saint is a medicine because the saint is an antidote. He said, it in, indeed, this is why the saint is often a martyr because the world mistakes a saint for a poison, but because he is an antidote. The saint will generally be found restoring the world to sanity by exaggerating whatever the world neglects, which is by no means always the same element in every age. Therefore, therefore, it is the paradox of history that each generation is converted by the saint who contradicts it the most. And that's what we're seeing this evening. We're seeing people who are giving their lives poor, chaste, and obedient, giving their lives in, in holy love, giving their lives in service, giving their lives in truth. And it is captivating. And it's captivating because it's a sign of a love that never ends. And that's why we're here. And that is what we will be internally invited into, the love of God who sees us and knows us and brings us home. So God bless you. Thank you.